Hey everybody, Scout Crafter here. Well, I'm down the basement tinkering today and I just was checking out some of my force gauges and if you have never seen a force gauge before, stay tuned, we're gonna take a look at it. Okay, a basically how all force gauges work, they're basically, all they are is a, a hunk of metal that when they squeeze together, a dial indicator registers by this little, this little angle plate here. Uh, it pushes in and out from this squeezing together and it shows how much pressure it is. And they calibrate that and that's how they de determine the weight or pressure that's being applied or in this case force. So they, you, you can use it as a tension or compression. But uh, most some of these are compression. They also have tension. Some you could use either or. But you could see, for example, this one here is a 600 pound uh, pressure gauge and you could see that the thickness here compared to this one which is a thousand pound pressure gauge and you can see the thickness is is quite a bit thicker so when you press this and press this it's going to be much harder to press this down thus giving you a, a different reading on the scale now if you look at this type here same thing and you see how thick this is uh, that's basically how you could tell from looking at them the force gauges is how thick they are now these are Dillon this one here is a Morehouse, and you can see the thickness of this. This one here is 50,000 pounds. We're going to try this one out along with some of these, give you an idea how they work and why would you use them. Okay, uh, this is one example of how you would use a uh, force gauge. Let's say we've all seen these little arbor presses, and let's say you had to press something that was about 300 pounds, and you want to see if this could generate 300 pounds of force. Well, you would. Uh, this one here is 600 pounds. That'd be plenty, so... The first thing you do is you take a steel ball, and the reason you do that, if there's any imperfections or unleveling, this will level it out. You place it onto the the uh, little receiver there. Press, place this underneath the press. Now we have a piece of uh, of square tubing underneath there, and uh, give an example of what this looks like now. When I press this down here, I know it's a little difficult to see, but 300 is directly down at the bottom. So we would press this like this and push down until we see if we can hit 300 and I don't have it bolted down but there we have exactly 300 pounds we just reached so that would show that this has enough pressure that you could press something in 300 pounds or whatever the case if you want to check quill pressure on a machine or anything like that and uh, that's basically what you use something like this for. Let's see some more demonstration. Okay, let's say you wanted to check your clamps to see if they were slipping and you want to compare them next to each other, see if they're wearing out. You could take your clamp like this, place it over the force gauge, press down, and you could see you get about, well, I get about 60 pounds of pressure. And you can see that by the gauge. So here's another test that you could do. Again, these are compact clamps for any type of use. Now let's take the big Morehouse out and see what we can do with that one. Okay, the first thing you'd notice about this, this is called a, it's a force gauge, but a, a ring gauge, they call them. The thickness on this can vary from a quarter of an inch all the way up to this. This is the biggest I've ever seen. Uh, it comes with a steel cap on top. Again, <clears throat> they suggest uh, a ball bearing, so you would use something like this. It has to be 52-100 or a real ball bearing. You can't use any any carbon steel or anything that would but if you're using it on something that's flat and you know it's not going to spin out of the way then you could uh, use it flat like we're going to so what would you test something that uh, has a 50,000 pound capacity on let me think okay I got just the machine the dake now when you have a press or something like this you're always looking for ex reasons to use it and this is a perfect example so we're gonna fit that uh, Morehouse into the middle there we're going to uh, put some pressure down see if we can get it to a few thousand pounds and how it registers we now have the Morehouse mounted into the dake this is a 10 ton press and uh, hydraulic press as you know and up here we have a hydraulic gauge now these gauges are traditionally not super accurate but the outside graduations you can see that go up to 16 those are basically tonnage okay uh, you can see the red line at about 12. This thing's rated for 10, 10 tons. A ton is 2,000 pounds. And this gauge, the outside, you can see the graduations. Now, each inner graduation is 500 pounds, but the numbers all register in 1,000 pounds, 5, 10, 15,000 pounds. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to lock up, make sure the hydraulics are all ready to go. They are. 
and we're going to pump up using this top gauge here we'll pump up to about three tons and when we get to three tons that should be six thousand pounds on a little bit more okay we're at three tons and we should be right here sure enough we're at uh, exactly six thousand pounds okay let's go uh, try it again we'll go up to about five tons okay which is ten thousand pounds sorry about the shaking okay we're at five tons and you can see here's where it starts to lose a little bit we're showing uh, 10,500 pounds so we start to lose a little bit of accuracy as we get higher let's go let's take it to six tons okay we're about six tons up here and down here all right we're uh we're just a little bit over at uh so at as you can see the accuracy this is how you would check accuracy on a uh, a press or something this is a ring gauge is what you would use to check and see where your your meters line up or your gauges line up anyway we're just having some fun down the basement with the force gauges hope you enjoyed the demonstration and take care and have a nice day